Levens, director of the Institute of, for Human Rights and Critical Su Studies at KU Leuven. Um, could you briefly explain um, what uh, you do as an institute at the University of Leuven? Well, we are basically we are part of the Leuven Center for Public Law, um, and so our uh, basically we do two things. Um, the first is of course um, education. Um, so we are um, offering courses um, that is introductory classes to the European Convention on Human Rights, uh, master classes on European, mainly European human rights, um, <clears throat> summer courses, uh, advanced classes. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, we cooperate, of course, uh, within the educational context um, with um, uh, international programs such as the European uh, Master on Human Rights and Democratization in Venice. And secondly, um, of course, we did research. Um, and so this means PhDs uh, on human rights issues ranging from um, human rights in, in, um, in a migration context to um, more conceptual uh, work on, on the relation between human rights and um, so-called human obligations uh, to um, human rights in the popular culture and so on and so forth. So that's a, a, a vast area. Um, um, but since we are related uh, to, the, to, the, to the public law department, um, we have a close cooperation with the um, constitutional uh, law department. Um, and so that's, that's a little bit our focus is um, human rights as constitutional rights and uh, European convention rights. Um, the the um, human rights on the UN level uh, is m more uh, incorporated into the, the international public international law department. Whereas human rights, as in the uh, European Union, um, is um, a matter for the uh, EU uh, law department. Okay. Well, this is great that you made a good introductory. Um, in Turkey, there is a widely held objection to an independent and impartial court. How to assess whether domestic law is effective in the context of the objection that courts are not independent and impartial. And question, and maybe you should ask that to um, experts in in fair trial and in in um, in, in maybe um, people like Professor Alomez and and so on who do, do, do and and Professor Vutu who, who really do the the, the comparative work uh, on a judicial. Um, dependency in throughout Europe. Um, <clears throat> within the Council of Europe, there are standards and standard setting mechanisms for that. Um, but the most, let's say, um, the most uh, straightforward uh, answer to that is, of course, going back to the very, the very idea of the European Convention on Human Rights, which is to say that um, human rights protection and so um, the uh, the independence of the judiciary and everything that is related uh, is of course incorporated in the convention that is article 6 of the European Convention um, and so it's in the first place up to the to the national authorities they are under the obligation to um, to, to provide uh, citizens with an independent uh, judiciary. And so it's 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 the the first thing is um, having a um, a strong um, I would say um, a strong constitutional commitment to um, to such um, independent judiciary, uh, and in the second place, of course, uh, should there be any problems, it's for the for the Strasbourg Court to come up and to assess whether. Uh, there are there are problems of independence, um, and 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 the, the, the Article Six case law 
um, is, um, although it's not the field I'm most uh, active in, but of course it's a, a case law that is, that is, that is very important um, uh, and extensive uh, and deals uh, with questions such as uh, independence of the judiciary. Um, and, and you have cases uh, on, on structural independence, you have cases on the, let's say, the more, the more subjective, the more, the more the, the personal attitudes of judges. Um, and so it, 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 it functions, of course. Well, that is to say, um, I think that it, it, where there is a, a, a national, where there is a national commitment, constitutional commitment to, to these values, um, I think the Strasbourg system works well. That is to say, nothing is perfect, no system is perfect. There are, there are always things that can be done better, or there can always be small you know, problems, uh, incidental problems at one trial or another. Um, and then, then the Strasbourg court, of course, is a, um, uh, a very effective, I would say, a, a very effective arbiter, so to say, just to indicate and say, there you have a problem, or this should be done differently. And since there is this constitutional commitment, since these states uh, do adhere to the to the underlying principle. They may very well integrate the Strasbourg uh, finding. Um, they may they may change their legislation. Even if sometimes they may disagree with the Strasbourg court on that particular point, but they can still say, you know, it's okay. We have a different view on that. I mean, as lawyers, we all know that it's never black and white. Um, but it's in. But but the system is like that. You know. Okay, Strasbourg locuta causa finita. If they say you have a problem, well, then 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 you change it. And and this is how things go. And sometimes states may be very very happy to change. And sometimes it's they're completely indifferent. And sometimes they may say, well, this is a little bit exaggerated. This is here, the court is going too far, but okay, we'll do that because you're a member of the club and you, you respect the rules. So the problem uh, will be there where you, you have states, and this, this goes beyond your question on, on, on uh, legal in, uh, or judicial independence. Um, cases where states, although they are part of the of the Strasbourg system, um, have serious doubts about uh, uh, the system, the way it functions, and do not share the the the, the Strasbourg view, um, uh, and do not have that strong, um, I, I would say, constitutional commitment. And that's where you get um, clashes between between the human rights approach as defended by Strasbourg and um, national traditions. Mm. So in the case of Turkey, that would be the case. Well, I suppose that uh, at at present, um, of course, they, I mean, with Turkey, Turkey is a very complex. Uh, Turkey is a very complex case, because it's an old uh, member of the, the the Council of Europe. Um, so there is a a they're there um, for, for for decades. At the same time, if you go to the to the case law of the Strasbourg Court, Turkey is one of these states with the highest number. Uh, the highest number of, of findings of violations. Um, and so there is somehow, and I'm not an expert on Turkey, um, so um, I, 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 I can only observe without saying why this is the case, but, but if, if you're from an external point of view, you can, you can see that on the one hand, there is this 
this this historical i mean the, the, this historical fact the wish to be part of the system i mean they're really all, almost they're not exactly founding fathers but they're 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 there for for, for decades and on the other hand um you see that there is this huge case law a negative well case law against them with with findings of violations and so you could you could say how come and maybe this is because but I, this i don't know huh but 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 maybe this this lays bare a kind of tension within your society where one part of society is absolutely willing to play the game and another part of the society is not very much convinced mm. and 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 do not manage to to change it and and so this is this is a case for turkey but but one could i mean you can you can see sometimes on a, on 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 a much how, how should i say on a much more uh, on a much smaller scale or uh, in 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 more uh, specific context you could you could see that some states do have problems with some with with some issues so, for example, uh, uh, Italy uh, is known for having problems with the excessive length of proceedings. And one could also say, how come? And how come that this kind of problem is, is not tackled? Okay. Now, no one would, would, would call into question, of course, the, 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 the commitment of Italy. Huh? Okay. Well, it's, it's true, but uh, okay, okay. Austria. What strikes me with Austria is that there there are, and maybe this is a, a, a mere coincidence, but um, there are a lot of issues on freedom of expression. Mm. Now you ask people in Austria, how come? Well, yeah, no, no. Belgium has has Article Six issues, um, so. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe uh, it's not for lawyers. Maybe the only thing a lawyer can do is to see. Well, I see something. Why I see what I see, or what is at play, that is something I think uh, for sociologists or for people knowing really the country country experts um, to explain what you what you see. So I'll be going on to the next question. Um, do you think human rights in Turkey and the Middle East will improve? What steps should activists and governments undertake to ameliorate human rights in the region? Uh, I, I, I think once again, uh, to go back to, to the previous answer, uh, you, you should ask that to people that really know the field. I have no knowledge uh, of the field, of the countries, the context, political, social, cultural context, to say something um, um, that that very sound on that. Um, uh, you also see that what is very much uh, at play is, of course, a bigger geopolitical uh, context. So, so once again, I, I'm not I'm not a um, as a Belgian constitutional uh, scholar and and uh, expert on the European Convention. I, I don't know whether I can I can say um very uh, very relevant things there but uh, there is one thing that that i think we need to to bear in mind um and that is that and that goes a little bit for for um, for many countries where where you see that there is a kind of backlash uh, where where human rights are questioned or where you you feel that authorities are stepping back um i don't know whether this is this holds true for the Middle East, maybe this holds true for, for Turkey. Um, and that is the very difficult exercise in um, keeping countries uh, on board, uh, continuing the dialogue with countries and um, pushing it too far. So um, uh, the more you push on the one hand, 
maybe the more uh, these these governments uh, become stubborn in their approach. Uh, so um, and and I'm not sure whether whether there we are going moving forward. Um, so that's 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 one thing. So it's a, a matter of um, finding a middle ground which allows to 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 us to um, to take steps, progressive steps in the in in the, the good direction, without uh, being too overtly uh, um, you know uh, pushing, uh, because this 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 may provoke the opposite um, the the opposite effect, and that is a very difficult exercise. That is a difficult. A very difficult exercise. But do you think that there is a, like a, a general formula for improving human rights in the country? Um, once again, I I don't I I don't know that. But I what what I would think is um, very important is human rights. That is an idea. That is an idea. And 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 civil societies. Um, uh, are important, and so what you need, to, perhaps, what what the first step is that people, that is, we the people, we the, the citizens, we should know in the first place that there are such a things as human rights. So there is an educational need. That is what what we see when we are teaching to people sometimes coming from other continents and they say we didn't even know that we had those rights. So the first thing is it's an educational. Uh, issue, you convince your civil society, and then you can. You, so that's where 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 activists are very important. Um, it's a mentality, and then um, uh, you can change your 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 your. You can hold your politicians accountable, or maybe from out that 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 civil society people then join politics, but they are convinced of their uh, human rights uh, ideas, and then. Of course, um, your governments may be much more uh, inclined to, 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 to respect and to follow the human rights approach. That is what, what I would think. So um, education seems to be, for me, the first step. Mm. Yes. OK. OK, great. Uh, with that note, I think we can conclude. Um, it was very nice having you. Thank you, Kun Lemons.